when we have corporate prayer and, and, and pastor asks us to pray for one thing, that's our commission to pray at that time. And in private, we also have a position to play in private. Each player on, this, on the team has to understand his or hers current position. How do they know their position? That's what I asked them. Well, you know that quarterback? Isn't that what the guy that when you get in the huddle and, he, and they all get around this guy, isn't that the quarterback? Yeah, and he tells each position, each person, what his game plan is. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. He's the one, the quarterback is the whole Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Then we have a coach. We can't forget the coach. Because the coach has studied out every play that the other players are going to play or has played in the past. He, he, he reels them over and over. He watches them over and over and over. And he has it down pat. What their, what their strong points are and what their weak points are. He knows even how they breathe and in, in, in how their lives are on the opposing team. Then he gives his team the plans and the strategies. He gives them to the quarterback, correct? The team <clears throat> practices and learns their position. The team practices and learns their positions and they play the plays that the coach has designed because he's given them to the quarterback. But also the team plays in unity in unity. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what we need in, the, in, in and for our mission. He has set before us, whether it is a long term, because sometimes I know that them football games can be long. They can be long. It depends on how many times they call call out, right? Or they time out. That's what it's called. Time out. It can be a few months that he's asked us to pray for a situation. Or sometimes we get the answer right away. That's not me. That's not me, not usually, in general. Remember when God, and, remember when God sets in motion and, creates, and created the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof, he had a plan. Now the game of football consists of, I'm gonna call the defense, all right? Two cornerbacks, is that what you call them? Two outside linebackers, one on each side. And the cornerbacks are in the back corner. And the middle linebacker, and two on each side of the field in the front. And two in the backfield that, that protect the goal. Okay. So now that is the defense. We have the offense. We have two wide receivers, one in each corner. Because we've got a line right here. Defense is on that side, offense is on this side. And he has the guards. They're guarding the corners also. And two on the side and, and two on the center, guarding their quarterback. We're to guard our quarterback also. The Holy Spirit says the word, he is the word, I am the life, I am everything that you need. We're going to guard him by our prayers because when he tells us to pray, we're going to put that incense up into the bowl and then the Lord pours down his anointing upon us. Okay, doesn't the quarterback get the ball? He gets the ball, but he throws it to the halfback. And he's going to take that ball and run to the defense. And remember, you guys are the defense. So what is that ball going to tell you? When, he, when that quarterback throws it to the, the halfback, the running back behind the quarterback, what is he taking? Remember, the offense has the same mindset and the goals to win. That's our enemy. He wants to win, he wants to steal, he wants to destroy. And, and his strategies are the same. He knows our weaknesses, he knows our strong points, he knows everything about us also. 
but we know that we have a master that is above all and knows all and will give us what we need. He would like to win, but I got news for him. I know the end of the story. He doesn't win. And that's where we have to stand. Stand knowing when we think that he's winning, he's getting through. He's getting through the defense, but he's not. Because the Holy Spirit says, I have, I have your back. I've gone before you. I've opened the doors. I know what doors you have to go through. And I know that you're obedient and going to do what you need to do. He's not going to win. So in your time before the Lord, don't think it's going to be easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. I've been praying for two sons for 25 years, but I've seen a glimmer of hope. I've seen that glimmer. I've got to pray for my son, and I got to ask him about football. <laughs> and he said, well, what do you need football for, Mom? I can need it for a Tuesday morning prayer. He said, oh, you do? And he just went, boo, 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 boo. I thought, yes, a shoe in. not going to be easy and, and we have an enemy who is cunning and crafty and knows how to play the game. First Peter 5 I'm going to go to it. I'm echoing here Charles. <clears throat> First Peter 5 8 through 11. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He says, resist him. Stand firm. Once again, there's that word. Stand firm in faith. In faith. Because you know that that family of believers throughout the world is, under, is undergoing the same kind of suffering. We're not alone in this. We've never been alone in this. But other people in other countries and everything, everything that's going on in, in our politics and everything else, we're not alone. In, in England, they are rising up themselves against the, the, their constitution, against the, the um, what do you call that guy? Prime Minister, yeah, thank you. They're rising up against her. They don't like the laws that they're being put into place any more than we do. So he says, stand, because they're sub suffering too. And if, don't think it a small thing. If the Lord says, I want you to pray for, um, for England, you pray for England. Somebody else is praying for the United States. Somebody else is praying for uh, Africa and Afghanistan. So we all have our commissions to do what we need to do. And the Lord of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while and with himself and will himself restore you. Because we will suffer when we pray. Pastor has told us and even when we had um, the prophets and that, they said there's coming a testing. A testing to our church. A higher testing than we've ever had before. And that's that's not just not corporate. That's individually also. If we're striving to go higher with the Lord and want more of him and less of us, uh, less of us then we're going to have that testing and that suffering will come with it. But what will we do with that suffering? Sometimes I get into the mully grubs and get mucky and pukey and, and then I have to maybe call somebody. I say, I need some help here. I need some help. I need some help. I've called Jackie before. I said, I, I need some prayer. I've called Cecilia. I said, Cecilia, I don't have a word today or for a Tuesday. And she said, oh, you always got this. Said, no, I don't always got this. <laughs> my knower doesn't know I got it, but my, <laughs> and my knower knows it, but my brain doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah. He will make you strong, and he will make you firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Remember, too, when we, we're in our defense and we're seeing the offense coming against us, we got that armor of God. We got the armor in Ephesians 6.10. You need to go there and put that armor on before you start prayer every day. I put it on at night. You know why I put it on at night? I have a hard time sleeping at night. 
I have a hard time sleeping at night. My mind does not click off. I go to sleep, I wake up, and I'm up. I've been up since about 3.30. My best time of sleeping is 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. But that doesn't happen because the brain doesn't shut off. But I have to put that armor, I put that helmet of salvation on my head at night when I go to bed. And I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I will get sound sleep. I have your helmet on, and no, no those fiery darts are not going to come through that helmet. And then when I wake up about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I say, okay, Lord, is it you or is it me? i got to discern. And that's where God gives us that discernment to know which is which. Me, I, I put the pillow over my head and I say, get out of here. I'm going to sleep <laughs> because I've already been awake for about an hour. In all of it, when we do, when we have those fiery darts, we remember that we serve a great and powerful God. He knows the beginning, he knows the end, and he's all powerful, and he, know, and he has your back. If, we, if you go to Proverbs 2, I'm not going there right now, 2 and 4, he gives you all of that wisdom and understanding and how to walk in it, and we need to draw from that from that wisdom and that's not just an earthly wisdom that is a spiritual wisdom and that spiritual wisdom how do we get it we get that from our intimate time that intimate time that we have just for ourselves this is not a corporate thing this is not a thing that God has laid on our heart this is a, what he wants intimate with him and then you say Lord here I am. What do you want? I want to come closer to you. I want to know your heart. I want to hear your heartbeat. I want to smell you. God has a smell. Ever smelled him? I smelled him. And he has an aroma that it's just, ah, it's better than roses. It's better than roses. And when he gives us that understanding, or that wisdom and that understanding to know the plays, the plays of the enemy, but the plays of the Holy Spirit, what he wants you to walk and what he wants you to talk and the scriptures that he wants you to read over your situation. He's already defeated the enemy and he's under our feet. I'm going to turn to Matthew 4 because I think this is really important. <clears throat> Where Jesus is in the wilderness, is tested in the wilderness. And I and I said, oh, Lord, this is so good. And I even read it last night for part of my devotions. It said, I thought, wow, you know, why didn't I see this before? But it wasn't for that time. It was for now. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 nights, or 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I'm going to stop there. I'm not a big faster. I don't fast very well. I go faster, but I don't fast very well. Anyway, um, and, I, and I really think the Lord is, is going to ask some of us intercessors. I know he's asking me, will you give up your food? For me, I, I'm one, I go by the scriptures. I believe if we deny our flesh, if we deny our flesh with food, if we can, you know, come maybe has medical or whatever, then you don't. But in the just of it is, if we can deny our flesh, I like Burger King. I'm not going to Burger King. It's not happening. If the Lord says no, he says no. So anyway, the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Because he knew the miracles that God had already done. And he made bread. He And the fish and the five loaves. He, he made it plentiful. Jesus answered, now hear this, ladies. Jesus answered, but he answered with the word. It is written. It is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. When we get into our intimate time with him, we hear his voice. We hear every love. He's, we're nuzzled right into his cheek, and he's kissing our cheek and saying, I'm, I'm your kiss. I'm Kiss, kiss, kiss. I love you. And I kiss him back. I pretend sometimes that I crawl right up into his lap and I just snuggle. I didn't have a father to be able to do that. 
and I crawl up into my father's lap, and I know I can sit there, and I can tell him everything I want to tell him. Everything. It doesn't matter if it's a little hangnail. He's interested in it. Then the, de then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. Because see, the, the devil knew the word too. The devil knew the word too. And that's what I was telling you about the offense and the defense. He knows every little weakness. He knows our strength. He knows our weakness. And he knows how to come against us. It is written... He, he will command the angels concerning you, and they will lift you up, lift up in their hands, so you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him once again, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. You see, this is his area. He can show him all the kingdoms of, this, of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. How many times has the enemy come in with a counterfeit sometimes? And that's when we have to have our discernment right there. Is this what you want, God? Is this, is this the area? Because it may look like it, but I have had times when it was not the right thing, and I've missed God. And that's okay. Repent and go on to the next. He said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all this. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. I thought, wow, wow, Lord, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Such a great example of my offense and defense. Because there you have the enemy. He's on the offense. We have Jesus on the defense. And he's speaking the word over the situation. I love it. The example was just right there before my face. So the Lord says to us, stand in faith. If God said it, he already has performed it. Be obedient to his voice and direction and stand firm once again. 1 Corinthians 15 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. You got a word from God, and you know it's a word from God? Stand firm and don't move off of the home plate. The goal line is be, we're heading for the goal line, and we want to be at the goal, in between the goal posts, right? So he says, stand firm. Don't move until I tell you to move. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that, you're, that you labor in the Lord, and it is not in vain. Our prayers are not in vain. And then Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. In all your circumstances, which is hard sometimes, hear me, it says rejoice in the Lord, even when the outward circumstances look bleak, we can have an inward peace and joy knowing that God is in control. Our job is to be obedient once again to what he has spoken in the word and prophet prophetically proclaim it. That's what I am. That's what I am. We're going to have communion. But I'm going to share a couple of scriptures that I keep on my desk in, um, in it for you. How big is your dream that the Lord wanted me to ask you? How big are you dreaming? Are you dreaming far beyond what you can imagine? For the depths of his love are timeless. I read this periodically. As you can tell, they're on scrap pieces of papers. Then the other one was, Know that I am God, and I change it not. Will you trust in me again? Trust for me and for a lot of women, and not just women, men, trust is a big thing. Well, I trust in the waters that I'm not sure of, that I'm going to step out into, and I, I have a problem with trust because everybody in my past has broken that trust, but I know that my God, he said, I change not, I change not, I change not. So he says, 
Will you trust me again, ladies? Trust me beyond so you can dream bigger visions. Trust me beyond so you can dream bigger visions. Bigger visions. So, you get ready for communion. Oh, I have one more thing to, to add to this. I, I had this written down ages ago. Don't wait for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He's available all the time. Call on him and he will show up. When we have faith based on knowledge, we know he has come. Will you dare to stand up for the person and be bold as lions? Esther was bold as a lion. And don't go on feelings, go on believing. Go on believing and trusting. Are we ready for communion? Online people, are you ready for communion? I want us all to check our hearts. It says in the word to check our hearts. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11. He says, check your hearts. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to check our hearts, Lord. Sometimes I have to check my heart because sometimes the right words don't come out of my mouth. Check your heart. Because we do not want to drink or eat unworthy. Thank you, Jesus. For I received from the Lord, Lord, what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. Now, I'm going to give thanks. I'm going to give thanks for his word. I'm going to give thanks for his love. I'm going to give thanks for who he is and what he has done for me in my household and my family and the generations to come, like the, the song that we had. Generations to come, I'm giving thanks for everything that he's done in my past and what he's going to do in my future. He broke it. This is my body, which is for you. Do it in remembrance of me. Eat. And in the same way, he took the cup. This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood washes us. It cleanses us. It renews us. It gives us resurrection life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for today, Father God. I thank you for the hearts of the women that are here and online, Father God. I thank you that, Father, there will be a hunger and thirst like never before, Father God, for the things of you and to get deeper into prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen.